Well, hello everyone. My name is Todd Classy, and this is my first live broadcast, my first live stream. So, if things go to heck, you know who to blame. <laughs> so, I assume, I assume everybody can hear me. My panel says you can. So, if you can't, well, I guess you won't know when you won't be able to say anything. But I hope you can. Um, a little bit about me and what this format is going to be about. Um, my name is Todd Classy. I'm a professional photographer. I live and work in the West, uh, mostly photographing rural scenes, everything from ranching life to farming life to landscapes, um, farmers, railroad workers, oil workers, that sort of thing. And uh, one of the things that was on my bucket list this year was to learn how to do a live stream. So lo and behold, you poor suckers that are with me tonight get to enjoy the first ride, for better or for worse. And we'll see what that all entails here a little bit later. Uh, the format I'm going to use for the live podcast, I'm going to edit photographs while I talk to people about photography. I'll try to answer some questions uh, if there are any. Um, obviously, there'll be times when we probably stray off the, the agenda and get into areas that we probably shouldn't be getting into, but that's the plan. Um, you'll notice that uh, I do have a little area down here for my cam. My camera uh, is not due to be until next week, and plus I'm working on, quote-unquote, my background set. It's not really much of a set, but I do want to have a nice, pleasant background if I can, and I'm working on that. Moving around some furniture basically in my office is what that entails and making sure I have some interesting books on the bookshelf behind me. So um, that's some of the things I'll be doing. Um, but we'll be editing fo some photographs and uh, while I'm talking to you, trying to do two things at once, actually three things at once if you include trying to manage the um, live stream. But uh, that's kind of the plan of attack for this evening. So. Tonight, um, a photograph that I'm going to work on is one that I took a few years ago. I'm opening up Adobe Bridge, which is where I keep all my photographs saved, and I have my favorites saved right here. It'll take a while for my network storage server to spool up. Uh, you'll notice this photograph is a little dull. I shoot an Adobe camera raw. Most cameras will shoot in raw or JPEGs. The majority of photographers shoot JPEG. Uh, most professional photographers shoot in RAW, and that's because this is a 16-bit format, whereas um, JPEG is only an 8-bit format. And what does that mean? Well, there's a lot more information that's stored on a file, but it also means that the photo is a lot more dull. A JPEG image goes through a processor on your camera um, that automatically assumes you're going to like a photograph a certain way. Um, so that's, you know, not what a professional photographer wants to do. A professional photographer wants to make a photograph um, the way we want you to see it, not the way some nameless, faceless computer does. So um, what I'm going to be doing is doing some edits to this. I got a few other photographs, depending on how quickly this goes. And so you guys can follow along if you have Photoshop. If you don't, by the way, it's a hell of a deal. Adobe right now is... Uh, you can get the photography plan. It's a subscription-based software, and I think it only costs like $10 a month, um, which frankly is is very cheap, very inexpensive. So, um, you know, it's something to, if you're into photography, it's something that you should uh, you know, probably check out. Um, tonight, the things that I'm going to uh, get into, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about mirrorless cameras. That's like the new thing right now in photography. Um, get into that a little bit. I also plan to uh, um, talk a little bit about what I have in store uh, for me um, on my channel here going forward. Um, but the first thing I wanted to talk about was getting into uh, something that's been going on in the world of photography, especially even among amateurs, frankly, is what's going on over at Flickr. Um, if you're my age, and I'll let you guess what that is, or younger, um, you may not even know what Flickr is. Flickr is, some consider, the first social media platform. It started back in 2004. I was an early adopter. 
of the software. Um, it's a web. It was a website where you know people uploaded photographs, and it was long before I even picked up a camera. I would go there and I would just gawk at photographs all day because I loved how they looked, and uh, it was very very pleasant for me to to enjoy the websites and so once i did get into photography in 2005 i started uploading photographs of my own and it was a big help because what it would do is it would teach me a little bit about what people liked in photography i mean it taught me that you know what what turned people on when they saw a photograph and this was long before i cared about making money with photography i was working in telecommunications at the time um so it was kind of a just a pastime was a hobby until somebody came calling to want to license my photographs for the first time. Um, that was when I finally saw that there was, you know, opportunities out there to uh, make money doing photography, and that's how I ended up, you know, doing what I do now. Um, but Flickr was immensely popular long before there was uh, Instagram. Flickr was busy, uh, you know, luring people into its website, and it was it was an extremely popular website. Uh, then in 2005, unfortunately, Flickr was sold to uh, Yahoo, which is one of the biggest cluster you-know-whats in the history of the Internet. Um, and they just completely drove that thing into the ground. And Instagram, I'm not sure what time, what year Instagram came around. I'm going to guess it was somewhere in the vicinity of 2007, 2008. Um, it was later bought out by Facebook, a company I loathe uh, with a great deal of passion. And uh, they, uh, you know, were kind of a, still are kind of a, a mobile platform type of uh, um, service. And it, you know, Flickr didn't develop a, a web-based application until many, many years later. And by that time, hell, everybody moved on. All the millennials moved on to Instagram. They all changed platforms and now Flickr is all but dead well this last few months a company called smug mug um, purchased the company um, in hopes of turning it around which frankly will never happen I mean I'm I'm still bitter if you can tell to this day um, trying to uh, the fact that I mean it was just a wonderful community lots of friends you made on there People hung out. People shared, you know, ideas about photography. And it was a very vibrant community long before there was a Facebook, long before there was a Twitter, long before there was anything else that was available out there and and uh, and what have you. So, you know, what's happening is, is that Smug Mug had to make some changes. And I get that. You know, I, I don't blame them at all um, for having to do that. They have to get a return on their investment, right? Well, um, they've made some you know, pretty draconian changes here in the last few weeks. You know, basically they said that, you know, okay, you have to start purchasing a, well, if you can hear that, by the way, that's my cat, Steve, who's looking for attention. He'll be a guest star, I'm sure, in my podcast a lot in the future. Um, sorry, Steve, I'm a little busy right now. The, uh... I'm sorry, can't help you. Anyhow, they uh, started to charge $50 for a membership fee per year. And they told everybody that if you had more than 1,000 photographs on the website, despite the promises that Yahoo made, you would have to... Uh... No. <laughs> I know you're upset too, aren't you? I know. Oh, he wants water, so I'm going to help him with that. He, so people had to start deleting their... Uh... Photographs, otherwise they were going to do it for them. And so, I mean, if you're on Flickr, you've got until about the first week in March before they start completely getting rid of your photos. And you might be surprised. Maybe you joined Flickr way back when, and uh, um, you have photographs on there you didn't know about. Now, if you don't have more than a thousand, well, um, don't worry about it. Um, nothing's going to happen to them. But uh, if you do, you might want to check it out and get those downloaded as soon as possible. Um, one of the programs you're going to want to maybe think about move, converting them to is uh, 
something called Google Photos. If you're not familiar with what that is, that was a program or a software, not a software, an app, an online app that replaced Picasa, which was pretty popular a few years ago. And I really like Google Photos. I'm going to do some videos on helping people how to use it and the such. So uh, it's something you might want to think about. But, you know, ever since Mug Mug took over, you know, you know, they, they've had to roll back some of the promises that were made to users on Flickr. Um, and they even had a, an outage where the site went down on February 11th. So I don't foresee really big things happening out there um, with the poor people at uh, Smug Mug. I think they they made a stupid investment. Like I said, Flickr is a shell of its former self. I don't know how they will ever recoup the money that they invested in purchasing that that place and uh, frankly it's the people that remain who are largely to blame for that mess um, I tell you what I complained somebody says you can tell I'm a little bitter <laughs> uh, talk to the executives in Palo Alto about the, my name and I'm well known within the hallways of uh, of a flicker after uh, I was on a several what do you want to call it uh, product development committees for Flickr to help improve their product um, and uh, I became very vocal very vocal about Flickr um, and as a result uh, the uh, I had one of their employees tell me once that they had a complete dossier this is before the whole Trump thing came out where everybody started talking about dossiers and he admitted to me that they had an entire file. They called it a dossier on me. So uh, uh, I became pretty well known in Palo Alto. They they offered to fly me out there once, and I thought that would taint my view of Flickr, so I politely turned it down. But uh, that was when I still had hope that they could turn things around. But, of course, they didn't. They won't. And uh, we're now stuck with the aftermath of a, app a website that's in its last its last dying breath uh, that's out there so if you're still using it it's great um, I think you'll agree it's kind of a bit of a ghost town compared to where it was um, but uh, you know which is a shame because Instagram is not at all what Flickr used to be Flickr used to be a pretty vibrant community of people and Instagram is anything but that. I mean, it's not a community at all. So, um, but that's nature of the beast. Everything changes for a reason, and that's okay. So, um, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, this is one of the, my favorite things to photograph. It isn't like I make a lot of money <laughs> on these types of photos. Um, I'll get magazines that'll print them from time to time, but for the most part, it's not the most popular. Um, brand of photography in the world. I like to photograph walls. Um, I came up with a theory that every uh, um, small town in America, doesn't matter where it is, um, there's uh, at least one garishly painted building in the town and it makes for a good photograph. Um, the other thing it does is it teaches you how to uh, teaches you composition. Um, which is important. What uh, you know, what I've done here is that when I when I frame this one, you know, I'm dealing with the rule of thirds. You know, the rule of thirds. If you're unfamiliar with it, and I'm sure most of you are, um, you know, it's much more pleasant to break down rather than centering your subject, which it's okay to do that too. But you have to know the rules before you can break them. It's better to you know position uh, your center of focus off center. So this door is located in the third. Uh, the right third of this photograph and the window is located in the left third and then you try to leave enough headspace at the top so that the top of the door in this case is in the top third that sort of thing and it doesn't have to be precise in fact it's better if you're not um, because many people see it as being kind of hokey um, when you follow the rules exactly um, I don't I try to get it close but I don't spend you know a great deal of time worrying about it too much to be honest with you. Um, but nonetheless, it also teaches. So what I'm doing here is trying to align and straighten out this image. And these take a while.
to do. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but if you want to make a nice wall shot, unfortunately, that's what you have to do. Um, and you'll also learn, if you haven't been to my web website uh, recently, um, I also very much enjoy photographing barns, barns and red sheds. Well, they don't have to be red, but unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess most of them are. So that's one of my favorite topics in the world is to photograph red barns. So, so I have got that pretty well straightened out. Um, now I'm going to work on the exposure on it and make sure I get the exposure just right. Um, so there's that about Flickr. Flickr is uh, is a ghost town compared to what it used to be, um, and uh, it's probably the last time I'll talk about Flickr, which is a shame, but it is what it is. Um, the other thing that's been going on a lot lately now is this talk about these mirrorless cameras. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with, you know, the it, back in 2000. 2 to 2005, every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there was out there buying um, DSLR cameras. I mean, everybody everybody thought that the better camera you had, the better photographs you produced. The dirty little secret is that's not, not at all the case. Frankly, the better the uh, lens, <laughs> the better the uh, photograph. Um, and cameras are kind of a dime a dozen. They get, and they also outlive their usefulness after about uh oh three four years whereas lenses can last a lifetime but that but i digress anyhow um a dslr camera has a, a mirror inside of it um where the lens is is bounced off through the through the lens and bounces through a prism and comes in through your eyepiece and so you know, what you see in the eyepiece on a DSLR camera is exactly what you're seeing through the lens, um, with a few minor exceptions. And uh, anyhow, the, the, the push is to do away with that. And what, they're, what, what they do, they're, 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 they want cameras to be smaller. And so they're, they're, they have something that's in between a compact camera now and the DSLR, and it's a mirrorless camera. Where they've completely removed the mirror element and they replaced the viewfinder with something that's electronic. And so what you see is a digital version of what the lens sees, which allows you not to have this large bump in the middle of the camera. It allows cameras to be smaller, but the resolving power also requires you go out and buy new lenses, which uh, can be quite costly, frankly. Um, so you know, people, I get asked all the time, especially around Christmas time, it's like, you know, what kind of compact camera would you recommend? I, I can't remember the last time I used a compact camera, to be honest with you. Um, I don't use compact cameras. I don't know anything about compact cameras. So, I, I mean, it's just not something that I, you know, I have a compact camera. It's a, it's a backup for when I'm driving down the road and I forget to take my big camera bag with me. But beyond that, I just that's just not something I deal with. And so the big thing now is like, you know, what kind of mirrorless camera should I get? Well, cameras look for features. If you buy any camera from Nikon or Canon or Sony, you're going to get a good camera. So you shouldn't have to worry about, uh, you know, what kind you should get. Um, just, be, just be cognizant of the fact that when you buy a camera system, you're stuck to it. In other words, you're going to buy all these lenses. And, you know, that's that's what you're going to end up using uh, because you're not going to be able to switch back and forth between platforms because buying new lenses and new accessories will end up costing you a fortune. So just make sure you pick a brand sometimes um, a little bit more than, than you are picking um, a uh, um, actual camera itself. The cameras will become, become obsolete after three years and you're going to want to replace it. Um, so just keep that in mind uh, when you're picking out a system. Highlights, OK. Select, inverse. 
Anyhow, so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, the problem with the, the mirrorless cameras are, though, they have a poor battery life. Um, they have something that's called startup lag, which means because it's it's a largely electronic device, um, it uh, it means that, you know, you have it, – it's, it's not something that will shoot instantly, which, you know, sometimes can be a problem if you're, you know, you're stumbling across action. You know, you want it to start up instantly. Um, so that's, you know, something for you to you know, keep in mind as well. Um, they have poor low light autofocus in a DSLR. Um, and uh, your sensor is more exposed to the elements. I mean, the nice thing about having a mirrorless system is that the mirror and the, and the, the cover help protect your sensor, whereas these, you know, other cameras... Uh, they don't do as good a job of that, which, which by the way, isn't such a horrible deal if you're just an amateur photographer. But I mean, if you become a pro, then you know that might be a bigger deal um, to you. But that's again, that's up to you. Um, oops. Uh, what does it mean to me? I love it. I mean, I you know back when I was first starting to get into, into uh, um, professional photography. I hated the fact that uh, um, all of these amateur photographers had nice gear out there because, I mean, they ended up becoming a threat uh, to my business. I mean, even if they weren't a good photographer, you know, every blind squirrel finds an acorn every once in a while. So I loved the fact when everybody started migrating over to cell phones and everybody starting to migrate over to these other cameras because while they can do some you know, pretty amazing stuff, frankly, given the, the, their form factor and their size, they're never going to compete with uh, the equipment that I have. Um, they'll make some good photographs. There's no doubt about it. Cell phones can make a good photograph too. But, you know, my, my flagship camera is a 50 megapixel camera. That's because I have clients, um, you know, that uh, are buying images that are nine feet tall and and 20 some feet wide. I have a photograph, you know, that I had to, you know, it was a very special operation that required me to stitch together several large uh, megapixel images. Um, but the image is, is nine feet tall by 11 feet tall by 60 feet wide, and it hangs in the Great Falls International Airport. So, you know, people still want larger resolution, and the smaller cameras just frankly can't do that. Um, they just don't have the ability to do that at all. So, um, and they, they, you know, they lack the ability to do, you know, take certain shots in action. You know, they, it, it's harder for them to get the shot. I mean, they'll do great in things like landscape photography, but hell, everybody shoots landscape. You know, I worry about people who can't shoot portraits, who can't tell a story with a camera. You know, that's the big thing there. So, um, if you can't, Anybody can go out and get one camera when they go on a photo or one shot when they go on a photo shoot. It's hard to go out and get 20 to 50 of them so that they can turn them into an editor or an art director or an ad buyer um, or an art buyer and, and, you know, to help tell a story. So that's that's the difference there. Uh, but again, like I said, you're, when you go out there, you're going to pick a brand um, and just, you know, read the reviews. But. Now, I'm not one who um, is going to have all the answers for you on that because that's just not the kind of gear that I use, and most professional photographers wouldn't. So that's that's something to keep in mind when you start asking other people about uh, camera gear. They just, you know, not every, not all, you know, just because photographers have that gear doesn't mean to say that they are familiar with it. Um, it just doesn't work that way. I know very I know very little about any other cameras other than the few that I own, so that's that's just the nature of the beast. Um, and frankly, you know, gear, while important to a photographer, is not, you know, not the most important thing. There are far one of the biggest insults you can have, in case you're unfamiliar with it, um, that you can give to a photographer is when you see a nice photograph of theirs, to go to them and say. Wow, you must have a really nice camera. I mean, that's a huge insult because, I mean, you don't walk up to a carpenter and say, geez, you must have a really nice hammer. 
if you like their cabinetry work. So um, you know, just keep that in mind when you're talking to photographers. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to offend them. It happens to me all the time, actually. So, But I've gotten used to it. I don't get upset about that stuff anymore. Um, as far as uh, the last point about that is, I mean, all these distractions that are happening um, that distract amateurs from becoming very good photographers, whether it be mirrorless cameras or cell phones or drones or, you know, an emphasis on gear. I mean, it's, it's great because it, it, it's not helping them, you know, get the shot. And that's, that's the most important thing. Rather than people work, you know, spending time on technique, um, they're, they're focused on the unimportant stuff like gear. And gear is, is, you know, neat to own, but it doesn't do a whole lot of good in the grand scheme of things. Let's just put it that way. Um, so what are we going to do on my channel going forward? Uh, I'm going to do these podcasts every Wednesday night, if you want to call it that. I call it a live podcast. I don't know what else to call it. Um, and then I am going to be doing some other things um, on a regular basis that are kind of tied to the world of agriculture photography, which is what you know the kind of the niche that I work in. I mean, I shoot other things, but uh, um, that's that's kind of my niche. So you're going to see more of that going on, um, starting hopefully tomorrow. Um, in case you don't know, the best days to upload things on YouTube are Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and usually in the mornings. Um, Eastern time, they say between 9 a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m. That's the best time to upload things onto YouTube for, for maximum traction. So I've kind of set up my schedule where I'm going to have things to upload on a regular basis on those days. Um, and um, one of the things I'm going to be doing is something called a, a Photoshop Minute. It's only a minute long. Um, I know most of you who know me can't believe that I can actually um, say something in under a minute, but I can. Um, and so it's kind of a way to teach me to be a little bit more, uh, use a little more brevity in the way I communicate. Um, and I'll just give a tip. And it'll be several of those tips throughout the week. Um, I'm also going to have some videos on using Google Photos, which is a great, powerful tool. If you're not already using it, you got to think about it. Uh, I'll be doing a lot more slideshows. When I go out and do a photo shoot this summer, I not only will uh, you know, edit the photographs, but once I've created my collection of photos for each shoot, I'll create a slideshow automatically. Um, and it's more designed to go out to my clients for them to see the photos, to see whether or not they want to purchase them. But those of you um, who follow along will get to see them as well. And I'll be doing some videos. I have a new drone that I'm working with and uh, um, and so that that's something else I'll be doing some more of um, I'll be fine-tuning my live podcasts um, like I said we're adding a camera next week I'm gonna be having a bit more uh, schnaz not too much too much of it is a, a bit overwhelming um, but I'll be doing some more fun stuff um, as well there'll be some contests um, from time to time and other you know interesting little jazz that i'll throw in as well um and so there'll be a lot of stuff going on more videos more photos more live streams and just a lot more um that's going to be going on i got one last thing i got to do here before i call this one complete um so that's what you, you have to look forward to if you want to tune in. If you're not already subscribed, I assume most of you are, um, then, you know, by all means, you know, please do so. Um, in case this is kind of an inside joke for some of the people here that know me, I am, I am channel building. So every subscription counts. Um, edit, transform, flip horizontal. Edit transform skew. I didn't like that box in the window. So I'm covering up the box in the window. All right, this is the part of the podcast. If you have questions, 
Anybody except for Shamo can ask me a question. If you want me to demonstrate something, I'll do two or three questions um, per show. Camera raw filter liquify. Oops. That was perfect until I went a little too far. There, you didn't even know there was a box in the window, did you? Ha <laughs> ha. Beautiful. And I'm pretty much done with that image. If you're wondering what it looked like before, hold on a second. This is what it looked like. And this is where I am now. That's the final version. The red actually is a little too bright. I always go back and look at the uh, old photograph. Adobe Photoshop, uh, where can I get it for free? Uh, you don't talk to photographer Shamo about buying stuff for free. People labor long and hard to create their intellectual property, and they should be duly compensated. Um, but if you think about it, for $10 a month or $120 a year, um, let's see, let's do the math, shall we? If you're a smoker, a pack of cigarette is $8. So for $120 a year, that's only 15 packs of smoke, and so that's like two weeks of cigarettes. For two weeks of cigarettes, you can be editing photographs. You can add photo editing to your bucket list for 2019. You can follow Todd on a regular basis. Um, if you hang out here enough, you're going to learn how to edit photographs, and you're going to have a blast doing it. So there's the answer to your question. Um, this is YouTube, man. I don't know what that means. I don't smoke, man. Oh, I'm sure you have some kind of vice in your life. You're a Canadian. Most Canadians do. You probably um, go to uh, that coffee shop up there. What's it called? What's the coffee shop in Canada called? I forget. Whatever it's called. But uh, you probably drink a lot of coffee. i got to dumb down this red. It's a little too bright. There. Better. File, save as TIFF. Always save as a TIFF file. It's because it's also a 16 bit file. And I am done. Um, Tim Hortons, that's it. So that's the only question. You can ask me any question you want. I got two questions left. Two questions. Question further up. Uh, I missed what program you were using there. What is it? I am using uh, Photoshop. Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud. It's uh, a subscription-based program. Uh, you can buy the entire Creative Cloud. Actually, it's a 40% discount this week. I saw an email that came through. For $29.95 for a year, you can have the entire suite. of, of it includes Premiere for editing videos if you're doing videos on there. I, I don't need any of that crap. I just need the photography software, which is Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, Adobe Bridge. So all of my photographs are stored in this program, Adobe Bridge. This is where all my folders and everything is contained in here. Um, and then all of my editing is done through two programs, Adobe Camera Raw. You, can, you see me flip it back and forth between this menu item and then this shell that I'm in is uh, Photoshop other photographers like to use Lightroom instead I'm I'm just not one of them I prefer to use Photoshop so that's that's where I am on that uh, do you prefer one camera brand over the other uh, I started with Canon my first camera was a Canon 20D back in 2005 and I've been stuck with Canon ever since because you know I have a lot of money tied up in gear 
and we're not about to replace it. I think Nikon makes a better camera than Canon, but Canon makes better lenses, and that's mostly what I care about. So, how long have I been a photographer? Uh, I began shooting as an amateur in 2005. I sold my first photograph about a year later uh, in 2006. I made my first big sale in 2007. And I couldn't believe that's how much money a photographer could make, uh, which isn't a lot, by the way. Most photographers, the average salary for a photographer in America is $35,000 a year. So, I mean, if you have hopes of becoming a professional photographer, trust me. Um, it takes, for me, it took me, uh, how long did it take? It took 10 years for me to go professional and a lot of trials and tribulations. I'm very happy where I am now, but it wasn't easy getting here. Let's put it at that point. Um, travel, yeah, uh, because of where I'm located. I mean, I travel all summer long. From April 1st to October 1st, I am, let's put it this way. Most, the average automobile in America, the person puts 12 to 15,000 miles on a year. Uh, last year, I put close to 22,000 miles on it, and it wasn't even one of my busiest years. So, do you ever take a picture that you don't need to fix in any way? Uh, no. Uh, because I shoot camera raw, every photograph needs a little bit of tweaking. If I shot JPEGs, there would be. Uh, but because of the nature of the, the workflow that I use where I shoot raw, every photograph requires some tweaking. Now, some photos only require four to five minutes of tweaking, which is pretty good. Uh, that means I basically did nothing to it but adjust the exposure and adjust the color. Um, but other photographs, I literally have had some photographs that I've worked on for, well, I'll show you one that I'm working on now. File, open, recent. This is it. This is a barn. It was a, uh, I have, it, it, on my slideshow, you probably have seen a color version of this. Um, color photographs are great for ad agencies and for magazines and such, but people don't like buying color photographs for hanging on the wall. Um, they prefer to uh, have black and white photos. So this year, one of the things I'm working on is expanding my black and white collection so I can ha have more retail sales. And there was a power line damn power lines in this photograph that ran right along this line and connected to the barn right here. And so just removing this to here took me about 30 minutes. And now for the next part, this will take me half a day where I go through and I meticulously take out this power line and make it look like it was never there. Um, there might be quicker ways of doing it that I'm unfamiliar with, but I literally go in there and have to rebuild every pixel in here so the branches don't look deformed in any way. Um, and that's one of the last things I need to do on this image before this black and white image is done. Kathy wants to see the corner of the barn door. Kathy, where are you? Can I see the corner of the barn door? What corner is that? The one that I was editing? Oh, the thing I worked on up here? This is a license plate. <laughs> I don't know why, but this guy had a license plate there, so I kind of wanted to accentuate it. Maybe that's why you were asking. I went in there and I, I highlighted that. The, I mean, it's red, so it's not going to stick out too much. Um, but I, uh, I accentuated this just a little bit, so somebody looking at this would see the license plate and see that's what that is. So where the license plate was. I believe it's Wisconsin. I believe it's an old Wisconsin license plate, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Wisconsin license plate. Uh, you'll notice that I didn't sharpen it. Uh, the one thing that people make a mistake is they always over sharpen an image. I only sharpen it when the, with the final output. In other words, um, if it's going to a printer, I sharpen it one way. If it's going to the web, I, sh I sharpen it a different way. But for my master edited file, I never really sharpen it too much. Um, I just leave it the way it is. Um, because when you sharpen it, you start to get noise and artifacts, and you, the photo becomes more crunchy, um, if you can understand what I mean when I say that. So I, I don't want a crunchy photograph. So Anyhow, where are we? 740? 
40 minute podcast. I'd say that's a pretty darn good podcast for my first one. Um, I think that's all I got. Um, you can come back next Wednesday. I'll be doing this all over again. Uh, and then March 3rd, <laughs> if you want to listen to a bunch of cowboys, real cowboys, and cowgirls and farmers talk about how many ears of corn there are in a stalk of corn, um, you can start turning in on March 3rd. Um, we'll be talking about things that are farm related. Um, that's again for my friends in the world of farming uh, and stuff. But uh, um, and then next week, like I said, I should have my camera set up. I should have my background all set up, and I'll be tweaking on a few things. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, uh, that's really all I got. So I thank everyone for tuning in, and uh, hopefully see you again next week. Thank you very much. Sit, Ubu, sit. Good cow.